G'day and kia ora. Atea here. Welcome to part two of my aircraft scanning for War Thunder tutorial. In this episode, defining parts. Today we'll look at why size matters. We'll talk about the difference between a colour map and a normal map. What a BLK is and how to edit it. Why you might want to use a DDS format instead of TGA. I'll take you through how I find the separate bits of my skin using a colour map, including those impossibly tiny little intakes and antennas. And finally, how to make a normal map. In part one, we set up all of the infrastructure for the skin and copied the War Thunder template to our working folder. Now I'm going to open up the TGA in Photoshop. There are two here. Pick the one that has either underscore A or underscore C as part of the name. You should see something like this. Just looking at it, some of the panels are really easy to pick, like the wings and the props, but other stuff you may have no idea about until you start skinning. The first thing I do is change the size. Click Image, Image Size. You'll notice that the size is set to 2048 pixels. We're going to change this to 4096, which is the binary round number closest to 4000. Almost all of the Magic Wand templates are 2K TGAs. The thing is, if you want your skins to look a bit better, you'll need to up the resolution. I now use 4K as a minimum, with a few at 6K and some at 8. Anything higher than that tends to crash my game when I try to load the skin. I can only imagine what sort of PC the Omega 89 is using to make and run his beautiful 10K skins. If I was going to save it now, Photoshop would just create a bigger TGA file. But I want to save it as something else entirely, a PSD or Photoshop document. I'll go to Save As and select PSD from the drop-down. I'll give it a nice simple name, gr-r underscore c. That's the one I'll be using in the BLK file in just a few moments. Okay, in the working folder we now have the grr underscore c PSD file. While we're here, let's open the BLK. You can see a bunch of stuff that looks pretty techy. You may not be a programmer, but you can kind of guess what each line does here. They point the program to the location where it can find the four components that make up the aircraft skin. The colour map and its damaged version, and the normal map and its damaged version. We're going to edit this, but be careful. If you accidentally delete a quote mark, or make some other unwanted change, the BLK may stop working. The game will still run OK, but it just won't be able to find your skin, and it will load the default camo instead. So I'm going to change this line, but only the bit inside the quote marks. I'll be careful to leave the quotes where they are and I'm replacing the A underscore 35B underscore Faffle underscore 1943 underscore C dot TGA with GR dash R underscore C dot DDS. I'll do the same for the other three as well, but of course changing the C to a C underscore damage and N and N underscore damage. Now's probably a good time as any to talk about the difference between a colour map, a C map, and an N map, a normal map. Colour maps are the files that show you what is painted onto the surface of a model. It's where you put the camo and the serial numbers and paint the nose art. They're denoted by using underscore C at the end of the file name. Sometimes War Thunder uses an A instead of a C. This was used to denote an alpha map which is just a fancy way of saying that the file might have some transparency in it. It really doesn't matter what you call them, you just need to be consistent. A normal map is the file that tells the program how shiny a surface is and how the light reflects off it. A new rubber tyre might be shiny, but not in the same way as a freshly painted cowling or polished chrome. The N map uses different colours to denote different surfaces. You'll see how it works in a moment. OK, now let's save the BLK. Now when we make changes to our skin, we'll be able to see them in-game. 
I know that I'm probably going to make more than one skin for this aircraft. So to make that process easier in the future, my first step is always to break down the plane into its component parts. Later on, if I want to isolate just an aileron or the port side of the tail, it will be so much easier. Start with the easy stuff. Pick a bit that sticks out from the background color, like the upper wing. I'll create a new layer and call it Wing Upper. Get into the habit of naming your layers right from the start. It's easy to find stuff when you only have two or three layers, but when you have hundreds and they're all called something like layer 235 or layer 138, before you know it, you'll be wearing a pretty floral bonnet and picking spots of light off the wall and putting them in a basket. Be organized. Okay, I'm gonna use the polygonal lasso tool to draw around the edge of my wing. On some parts, you can see the edge really easily. On others, you just have to make your best guess. Like here. You can see that there is something, I don't know, maybe chipped paint, which probably shows you the trailing edge of the wing. I'm going to go all the way around, and eventually I'll join it back up to where I started. Now I'm going to flood fill it with my foreground colour. The shortcut is Alt Backspace. Control Backspace does the background colour instead. Now I'm going to add a colour to this layer. Black stands out really well in the thumbnails, but it's sometimes hard to use when finding your parts. So I'm going to click on the little FX button, which adds a layer style, and I'll select Color Overlay. Because I've got an older version of Photoshop, it will default to red. But if you're using a new version, it will remember the last color overlay that you used. Okay, time to save this so we can see what it looks like on the model. I'm gonna click on Save As, and I'll be selecting DDS from the dropdown. You may not have that option, DDS is a special Microsoft format for compressing graphics files used in 3D modeling. If you don't have it, you can grab the plugin from the description panel below. If you don't want to do that, you can always save your camo in the TGA format, but DDS produces superior results. When I select DDS, I get this somewhat complicated looking dialog box. If you are new to the DDS thing, there are a bunch of different formats that you can use, but I only use two. This one here, 8.8.8.8ARGB, .8 and this one, DXT5 ARGB. The first makes slightly bigger files that are created pretty quickly. The second type takes a lot longer to make, but the files are smaller, so they download and upload quicker. Because I want to change things and view those changes frequently, I'm going to use the one that saves quickly. I don't care much about the file size at the moment, but I will later on. So I use 8.8.8.8ARGB. .8 okay, let's have a look at the model in the game. Let's right click and select customization. Now pick A27245GRR from the drop down. And there's our red colored wing. Now you may have noticed that my hanger is a bit, uh, well, Spartan. That's because I'm using a special Skinner's hanger developed by Petronera. It means I can scroll around like normal, but I can also go underneath and zoom in very close. There are one or two problems with it, but it's a huge improvement on the standard hanger if you're skinning. A link to the file you need and the instructions on how to use it are in the description. Okay, so now I'd go through and create a new layer for each part of the aircraft. Because I do this every time I make a new skin, I've already built a framework for it, and I'll import that now. It's a special file that has all of the folders that I use when building a skin. After you've done a few, you may create one too. It really speeds up all of the repetitive work. In mine, the layers have different colors to make it easy to see which part is where. So here's the plane with all of the main surfaces colored. And here's what it looks like in the hangar. Once I've got all of the main obvious stuff marked out, I'll make copies of the shape of each layer by control clicking in the thumbnail and then shift control clicking on each layer's thumbnail in turn. When I've got them all, I put them into a single layer and make it black. That will help the colored bits stand out later. Save it as a DDS. Now, here's an important thing to note. 
Never use pure black or white in your skinning. The PBR style of rendering can't handle that colour space, so always use something a little bit less than those two colours. Here's the difference. See how pure black looks like, I don't know, black velvet. There's no light reflecting off it at all. Whereas this is very, very dark grey. It looks like black paint on the model though. You may also notice some strange marks on the skin at this time. Don't worry about it. It's just the program using the default normal map which determines how shiny different parts are. Actually, this might be a good time to create our normal map. Go back to our working folder. Open up the normal map. That's the one with the underscore n.tga. Change its size to 4096. Now save it as grr underscore n dot psd. Now you can go through the same process all over again and trace out each panel, but I'm a lazy guy and there's a much easier way than that. Go back to the colour map and click on the layer we just made, the one that's black. Right click and select Duplicate Layer. Change the destination document to grr underscore n dot psd. Now jump back to your normal map and you'll see the black shapes layer. Click on the layer style button and pick color overlay. Pick a nice orange color like this one. The RGB is 217-1280. Now save this as a DDS file. You can see back in the game, we now have a nice shiny black plane, almost as if it belongs to some vague yet menacing government agency. You'll notice that while we had most of the bodywork coloured black, there are still a few things missing. These two sticky out bits, this tube on the wingtip, the bomb racks, the prop hub spinner, not much on this side, those purpley things are formation lights so they're supposed to be that colour, but wait, the rear air deflector and these handles all need to be found as well. But if I look at the C map, those missing bits are here somewhere, but how on earth do I find them amongst all this random stuff? To help me, I've developed a tool that I call the Finder. Now I'm not claiming to have invented this idea, I'm sure every skinner who's been doing this for a while has developed something like it. Okay, let's fire up the Finder to see how it works in reality. I turn on the primary layer and you can see that it's made up of four coloured squares. Save this as a DDS and let's look at the model. Okay, so first up, notice something odd here. Our colour map is made up of black and the four colours red, teal, yellow and purple, which should mean that everything here is one of those five colours. It will be that way for most aircraft, but the Vengeance has something different going on. Notice the cockpit interior and the rear gunner detail. Also, the engine cylinders and the prop mount housing. This model is getting that information from another source, not from this colour map. From my skin, that's not really important. I'm going to be leaving the interior and the engine as they are in the default camo. But on some planes, like the Lancaster, there's just too much to fit into one colour map. So they have a second set of maps that you'll need to find and to modify, just so that you know. Now let's look at our missing panels again. The weird bulges are purple and yellow. The wing chip tube is teal. The prop hub is purple. The bomb racks are yellow, and so are all the handles on the cockpit. Looking back at the colour map, that means that one bulge, the bomb racks and the handles are all in this area here somewhere. The prop hub and the other bulge is in here, and the pedo tube is in this area. OK, I'm going to do the pedo tube as there's just one thing to find. I'm going to turn off the finder and let's see if we can see it. Notice I've thrown a couple of guides in here to help me define the area. No, can't spot it yet. Time for stage two. I've already turned off the main finder, but I'm now going to select the teal layer. I'll drag another couple of guides in, save it as DDS again, and let's look at the model. Huh, so it's now yellow. That means it's in here somewhere. I'm going to guess that it may be either this thing or that one. They both have the look of a tube-shaped object that's been flattened out. 
So I'm going to create two new layers and color each one of those parts a different color. Let's save it and check. Aha! Uh -huh. So the bit that's red is the pedo tube mount and the bit that's green is the tube itself. The pedo head isn't colored. So I'm going to bet that that's this bit here. I'm going to leave that bit unpainted. I'll keep the other two layers separate, but I'm going to name them now that I know what they are. And I'll add them to my black layer. Okay, now I'm going to do the same for all of the other bits and pieces. My finder has four different layers right down to the very tiny. That helps me get 99.9% .9 of anything I need to find. I just use progressively smaller and smaller squares each time until I find the thing that I'm looking for. Okay, so finally, here's my vague yet menacing secret government agency plane ready for part three. Panel lines and rivets. See you there. Kia kaha.